Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements Impressionist Brush tutorial, we'll be using the Impressionist Brush to create this impressionistic painting of a sunflower. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure that you click the subscribe button and also click the like as well. If you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, look at the link for my complete training, which you'll find in the description. Okay, let's get to it. We're going to create this painting here inside of Photoshop Elements using a combination of the Impressionist brush and also a filter as well. You can see our different steps over here on the right hand side. There's the original photograph which we'll be basing everything on. Here is the Impressionist brush layer. Here is the filter layer with some additional Impressionist brush applied to it. Alright, let's go ahead now and begin work on this project. I'm just going to close this file down. And we'll start by opening up the original photograph. And I have mine right there. Here we go. And I find a link for this photograph on my material support page. And everything is based upon this. Now, because the techniques we'll be using are destructive techniques, we want to make sure that we have a copy of this file saved, a copy of this image saved. So there are two things you should do. The first one is to make a copy of the original layer here. Just drag it to the new layer button, make a copy of that. Now in most cases this should be enough because you can't save this back to the JPEG file because it has layers in it. So automatically you're going to have to save this as a Photoshop file or PSD file. But that's our next step is just save this file to a file. Save and notice it's going to say PSD right there automatically on it. So it's already saved as a Photoshop file instead of as the JPEG, which the original image was. So it gives us a protection. You can rename it now if you want to. That's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and click on Save. So there it is. The first two steps is to protect your original image. We now can just hide that one. We don't need that any longer, but it's nice to have it here inside of the file. Just in case we mess up on our Impressionist brush, we can then always go back to the original picture, which is right here in the same file. It's a real good protection have it to be in. Okay, let's talk about the Impressionist brush. I'll first describe how it works and then we'll go ahead and do the actual process for the image. Now the Impressionist brush is right here with the brushes. Normally you'll see this brush here, the brush tool. Just to the right of the brush tool is the Impressionist brush tool. Now on the brush type down here, I would just choose a nice soft brush doesn't really matter what it is, but nice soft brush is already new. This works out just fine for that. I tend to keep my settings real low in here, 21 pixels as you see right there. It's a very small brush size. And the opacity I keep down as well. This doesn't have that much of an effect on this. It really is just the brush size. Now it's a brush size in combination with other settings. And this is the important thing about how you use this brush is this additional setting stuff over here underneath the advanced tab. In here we have three settings. The first is your brush shape. We have tight short, tight medium, tight long, and then loose dab and tight and loose curls. Each one of these acts kind of like a different brush shape like you have over here. It applies to brushes in different ways. We'll look at that in just a second. We'll go through all of those and just give you little demos on those. The second one, area, this is how large of an area the brush affects. So this area is really the spread beyond the brush size. So your effective brush size with the Impressionist brush is a combination of your initial brush size and the area size here. So you have to kind of think of these as a set when you're setting your brush strokes. Again, I keep this relatively small. Notice I'll keep these real low as well. I'm real low end for this. Tolerance controls how this is applied. The further up the tolerance is the less the application is. I tend to keep mine down at the zero setting for the easiest control, but again I'll show you how that works in just a moment. Okay, let's look at our different sizes in here. I'm using a very, very small brush size, tight stroke, and if I click here, see it just kind of messes up the stuff, just kind of disturbs it or, or pushes it around, giving it kind of this impressionist painting. Now I found the best way to work on this is just doing little taps like that, just kind of tap in here and 
move along directional shapes if possible, like the lengths of these flower petals, for instance. And just a little tap so it gives you the best quality. Now, if I increase the area, let's go to double the size. 99, pretty close. Notice how much larger it is now. Larger area. So the larger the area size, the larger the area being affected by the stroke. Also notice how this is a lot smoother and the smaller size is a lot tighter. Now tolerance, so I bring the tolerance up a ways. These are both on zero tolerance. If I bring this up just to say 10 percent right there, notice now how it's only affecting some areas, it's not affecting other areas. It's affecting areas based upon what is next to where you're clicking at. If on what you're clicking directly, it's not going to affect that, but colors that are outside of that range, it begins to affect. So it has a little different approach to it. So it's, it's kind of like a, a reverse tolerance. The area that you're painting on, that's protected, but areas around that will tend to get distorted by the brush. It's, it's a nice tool if you want to you know, kind of work around backgrounds around areas. But for you know the most and easiest use on this really to leave the tolerance down at zero. That's what I normally do. If I do anything, I'll bring it up only to one or two at most. But I'll leave it at zero for this discussion. Okay, our different sizes in here. That was a tight short. Here's a tight medium. It's just a larger effect, as you can see. And tight long, again, even a larger effect. The loose medium right there. You get some brush shape happening in there now. See a little bit of kind of a, a stroke shape happening. And loose long. Again, brush stroke but real loose. lot like little brush squiggly things happening in there. The dab is just real small. It's kind of like a super tight version of the tight short. Now the curls actually give you a curl shape. You can see it right there. There's that curl shape. And they have long curl shapes. There we are. And loose curls. So again, you have this kind of a, a stroke texture happening in here. And of course, the loose curl long gives you the greatest amount of distortion. And these are all working on this with a very large brush, 99 pixel brush. All right, let's now go ahead and set up our settings to do the actual painting in here. And we'll keep everything very, very small. I'm first going to get rid of this layer that we've messed up. There we are. Let's make a new copy and hide the background again. And we'll use this back to our impressionist brush. I'll leave my size here at 21 pixels and let's set this to the tight short. And I'm going to bring the area down just to 15 pixels. So real, real small tight short. 15 pixels. Leave the tolerance at zero. And let's zoom in. And we're going to do a pass right now. I'll zoom out one touch. There we are. We'll do a pass on just the petals first on our main subject. And I'm just going to kind of follow along the shape here. Notice how it also tends to make the, the shape fuzzier. You, know, it, you lose focus on your edges. We'll bring back in the effect of some focus with a filter a little later on. But for right now, we just want to get this brush strokey effect in here. Now, I'm not trying to cover the whole thing. I'm leaving a few spots undone, but just, just working around. What I'm really trying to do is I'm just trying to get rid of the effect that this is a photograph. Anything which looks like a photograph, I want to lose that effect. And we'll do this in three stages. The first stage is this foreground flower. Second stage will be the middle of the flower, and then the third stage will be the background. That actually goes very fast. But even as you can see, it's, it's not a, a difficult technique. It isn't a long-term technique. Just a matter of coming in and giving the petals the look of brush strokes instead of the look of a photograph. And let's work our way clear around the bottom here, and then we'll go back and do the center section. The center section takes a couple of steps to have a nice look. Because it's all very similar in values, when we do this 
first stage step is going to really kind of blur that out and just give us a big brown mess. So we'll add back in some texture on that one. Okay, let's just about finish at the bottom part here of the flower. And let's work back around and get the whole flower done. We'll then get the background done, then I'll come back to the center of the flower after the background is finished, since that takes a couple of additional steps for a nice look. Now I could just drag this along the whole thing. It would take a little less time, but it isn't as controlled. I want this nice and controlled, so I'm just tapping this. I really want to keep the colors as clean as possible and not go too crazy on it. Okay, there's the flower. I'm just kind of blurred things out and distorted it using this brush. Let's now increase the size of our area here. I'm going to go up to 50, a lot larger, and we'll use this just to get rid of the photo look on the background. Now the larger strokes is going to end up being a little bit blurrier and a little less detail than in the flower petals itself, and that's fine. That's what I want. So this is just going over the whole thing, and you can do this fairly quickly. We just want to get rid of any of those tight edges, those sharp edges that are a dead giveaway that's a photograph. This is our losing the photographic look in here. Now this picture does have a an out of focus background which helps. We don't have to do as much of this. So just the areas that look like they're a photograph I want to hit. Just kind of spot checking around in here and blurring this down. Also by using a different setting, a larger setting on the background here, it tends to give more focus on the foreground flower which just makes for a nicer image, a bit more of a center of focus that way. Okay, just about done here. i got this other side to go. Then we'll just take a fast peek around, make sure that the sides are all done. Right in there. Okay, so that's the whole background. Quickly just messed up a little bit. Let's now do the center of our flower. And we'll go back to our other setting, back to 15, keeping it fairly small. And you can see how because of the values that are in here, this really just gives us a big brown mess. But I need to lose that detail because that detail is what makes this look like it's a photograph and not like a painting. So I'm just kind of working around, just again, a little short stroke so that I keep the colors in tightly confined areas and that helps to the overall look just artistically speaking, we want to keep those colors as separate as possible. There's a lot of little fine detail on that edge. I'm going to put in some larger detail around that edge. Let's switch over here to a tight curl look instead, and I'll bring the setting up to 25. And I'm just going to come just along the edge here and kind of bring back in some of that curl and some of the colors from the petals and just overlap this back in again. Now part of the reason for this is to help hide that edge and also because this expanded out as we did the first pass on that. Okay, we can now come back into our tight short and just come in, I'll leave that at the same settings and just blend out the edges a bit right in there. Okay, now I want some detail back in the middle, so for that we're going to be switching brushes. I'll go over here to the regular brush, and I have one right here. I've already selected it. Let me show you where I found that. It's in the assorted brushes. So if yours says default brushes, like that, if you click on here and it says default, just change that to assorted brushes, and then I'm using the wheel on the mouse. If you just scroll down towards the bottom down here, you'll find some texture brushes. There's one right there, and here's another one here. It's kind of a texture thing. It says texture 3. There's a number 54 underneath that, the 54 size brush. So click on that one, and then I set mine up to 164 on the brush size. Pretty good large size. You said there's the size of that brush right there. Now we need to have a different color, so I'll grab the foreground color eyedropper here. I'm just going to grab kind of a medium 
orange in here, medium-ish, a little darker orange. Right there, just kind of kind of a burnt orange. And I'll just come in and tap in a little bit of texture like that. Let's now change our color to a brighter yellow. And I'll do a little bit in here towards the middle. And that gives us some texture back there in the center now of the image. Let's bring this back up to full screen. There we are. So it looks pretty good at this point already. But we can take it a bit further than this. We can now apply a filter on here. I'm going to make a copy of this there so we can compare these two. There's our copy. Let's hide that for a second. Let's apply a filter onto this. Go up to the filter and filter gallery. And here is one called dry brush. It's in the artistic section right there, dry brush. And there it is without, and here it is with. It just kind of tightens things up, puts some hard edges back into the image again. We lost our hard edges when we use the impressionist brush. This brings our hard edges back in again and gives us a bit more of a brush stroke effect. So do the dry brush. The settings I have are clear to the top on brush size and texture and about in the middle on brush detail and choose OK. So there's that step. So here it is without that filter and here it is with a filter. This kind of tightens up the painting effect. Now the last thing I want to do here is just to knock back some of the leaves in here, the real hard edges. I want to keep the main focus on the foreground flower. So to do that I want to knock back some of the background stuff. So we're going to zoom in again. And also, you see we have some banding up here in the sky. I don't want to have that banding. The banding is kind of a dead giveaway that we use to filter on this. So we'll take care of that as well. And that can all be done back with the Impressionist brush one more time. Here's our Impressionist brush. We're still on the tight short. 25 pixels is fine. And I'm just going to come in and do some painting up here. Some brush strokes in the sky, just losing that banding quality. Again, that's just a, a dead giveaway that this is a filter. We don't want to have anything that obvious happening. So we'll knock out the banding with this brush. And then once that's done, we'll go back. We'll knock off some of the hard edges on some of the leaves just so they go back into the background a bit better. Okay, there's the sky. That looks good. Now on the leaves, some of these areas like this, they're a little bit too much. So I'm just going to come in and where I have those harder edges, I'm going to do a little bit of this Impressionist brush just to knock back some of those hard edges. I'll leave those flowers in there. I think they're okay. I just want to lose some of this edge here. Again, this just puts this bit further back into the background because it's a little softer focus this way. Leaves the flower more in focus in the foreground and that just makes a little bit better artistic effect on this. So I'm really just caring about the leaves in here. Remember, it's just too hard of an edge. I'm doing a little bit of this. Notice I'm not trying to do the whole edge. I'm not trying to really be careful about this. Just a little bit of, of stuff to knock down the edge effect in there so they're not quite as striking or as jarring as our foreground. And just about done a little bit up here. And there we go. Let's now just set this to fit on screen. I'm going to float the picture for a second and we'll zoom in just a bit more so we can compare these. There we are. This is as large as we can. So there's the Impressionist, finished Impressionist painting. There it is without that filter, that last filter step. And of course there's the original. So there's our finish and there is the original. So that's how you can use the Impressionist brush and a little bit of filter work to make a real nice Impressionistic painting effect. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.